In the middle of August, we took a long weekend to go camping with our Scamp Travel Trailer. We took the ferry from Cape May, New Jersey, down through Delaware to get to Maryland. We were staying at Assateague National Seashore, which is famous for its wild horses. Assateague is a barrier island on the side of Maryland, just above the line of Virginia. We were having a great time until we woke up our first night at about four in the morning being bitten by these very painful little insects. We were so worried about mosquitoes when we were getting ready for this trip because Assateague can have some very aggressive mosquitoes. But these gnats were so tiny, they were able to go right through the screened windows of our camper and they were everywhere. There were hundreds of them inside the camper by the time we woke up. Last night was not our favorite night of sleep, and this is what we have done. This is what we have resorted to <laughs> in the camper to try to keep the bugs away from us. And I'm sad to say it's still not working. We'll see how it goes tonight. I'm going to try a couple different things, but um, this is the bug net that we brought. The original plan was that we were going to set up the awning outside and put the bug net underneath it so we could sit outside in the evening and we wouldn't get attacked by mosquitoes. The problem is, is not the mosquitoes, although there are some mosquitoes for sure, it's actually the noceums, the little tiny, tiny bugs. They can go right through the mesh on our bug net and right through the mesh on our windows. So it's really, really hot right now. We kind of have a, a decision of we close the windows, we're going to sweat to death. Um, but with the windows open, the noceums just go right through and come in and they were biting us like crazy last night. So I don't know. Hopefully we can figure out a new plan. Okay, now we are going to the beach. It's still pretty hot today, so it seems like the best plan of action. And it's supposed to thunder later, so we want to get it in before the thunderstorms. Assateague has beautiful beaches. If you go to the main beach area, you could actually walk there from the Bayside campground. They have concession stands and lifeguards on duty during the day. It was very hot and we realized we were starting to get sunburned already, even with lots of sunscreen on. So we headed back to the scamp to get some popsicles and to cool off. Now, an important thing to know if you're planning on going to Assateague is you have to have a plan for safe food storage. The horses will try to get your food and you have to be very careful to make sure you store it properly. The last time I camped here was probably well, at least 10 years ago, maybe more. And at that point, they didn't have these special picnic tables, which I think is such a clever idea. The problem was last time the horses figured out how to open people's coolers and they would like flip the lid off and eat everything inside and they would just be like throwing stuff all over the place eating bread and all sorts of stuff that's really bad for them so they created these little storage areas underneath the picnic tables that you can actually slide an entire cooler into but the horses can't open them so you can store your food in there which is very clever and it's just right underneath the picnic table. So this time I haven't seen any horses getting into anything. So hopefully people are like figuring out how to be smarter about their food storage because it does create a kind of a dangerous situation where the, the horses start associating people with food and they are wild horses. So they'll kick and bite and all that kind of stuff. They're not friendly and domesticated. So it's important that uh, they don't get too close to the people, although they don't have any fear of people. They'll walk right up to you. You have to be careful. <laughs> they don't sneak up on you. Since we forgot to bring the proper pieces to set up our awning, we ended up sitting under the tailgate of the Jeep to get a little bit of protection from the harsh sun. But we sat there for a while and watched the thunderstorm clouds building in the distance because we knew that there was a storm coming.
Just a little while later, the storm clouds opened up and it started to pour. I looked outside and I saw two of the horses standing in the road, just letting the rain come down on them. They stood there motionless until it stopped raining and then they started to walk down the road and they just looked like they were so relieved that they got a little break from the hot sun and the bugs. A few minutes later we looked out and saw the other herd members coming down the street. The mother and the foal that we were watching yesterday were heading the line up and the other horses were following behind. It's so funny to see them just walking down the street very casually. It's funny how they just walk down the street. Yeah. <laughs> we got just a little bit of a break in between storms and luckily our solar panel was doing a very good job of keeping our batteries charged. The bugs were starting to come out so we headed back into the scamp and got a little bit of protection from the screens. Shortly after, the next part of the storm rolled through and this one was even more severe. The wind was pushing everything around, we could feel the scamp rocking and the rain was very heavy. Rock in the scamp. Like one of those. Jeez. <laughs> it's good to not be in a tent. We got another small break in the storm, but just like the last one, this one was not going to last very long. We were going to try to go down to the beach if it stopped thundering, which it did not. It's still actually a lot of lightning. So instead we're making cookies. That's a good trade-off. And we have cookies. This weather though, yeah. this is no joke. <laughs> it is pouring again and the people in the campsite right next to us are already leaving because their tent was leaking and it's just like constant thunder and lightning for what like two hours now yeah. it's been going and going so i really feel for the people in tents because this is rough all right we're gonna eat cookies The next morning we woke up to mostly cloudy skies, but the sun was starting to break through and some of the blue sky was starting to show. Since it rained so much last night, it cooled it off and we were able to sleep with most of our windows closed. This helped significantly so that the little noceums had fewer entry points to get into the camper. They were still in there, but it wasn't quite as bad as the previous night. I took a little walk around the campground when it was still quiet and I went over to the bay side. Some of the campsites are right along the bay. This was one of the ones that was open and it gives you these great views but what I figured out is that the closer you get to the water the worse the bugs are and I got attacked by 20-30 mosquitoes. So I headed back into the scamp for safety. getting ready to remake the bed because it was getting really disheveled and I just wanted to show you the process because a couple people have asked about our bed setup and we're actually about to change it so I want to show it to you now so you can see the difference okay so these are the scamp cushions which are extremely firm which is why we're gonna change it and we don't ever change this back into the dinette this can actually be a dinette with like seats on either side we're never gonna do that so 
we want this to permanently be a bed. Here's our bed extension, that piece of wood that slides out. You can see that in some of our other videos. But since we're getting ready to go do stuff, I put the bed extension away. I took all the sheets off because we had to shake them out. And these are two mattress toppers. That's how firm this camp bedding is. We have two very nice soft memory foam mattress toppers. The problem is they don't fit perfectly and they tend to slide around like when you're moving at night they will tend to bunch up and kind of move. So every couple days I have to fully strip the bed and just put it back together. Which is one of the problems that we're going to hopefully try to solve by switching out for an actual mattress. Um, but now I'm going to put the flat sheet and the mattress protector on here and then um, kind of make it hopefully look nice. There's really no special secret to the way that I make the bed. It's really just taking everything and like tucking it around the corners and using the sides of the scamp mattress to hold the sheet in place because I think a fitted sheet really doesn't fit the bed super well. So it's just a flat sheet that you like tuck in nice and tight around the corners and you're always going to have to redo it. I think maybe that's what people are looking for, like a way for the bed to like stay together better, but I haven't figured that out yet. I can make it look nice by tucking everything in, but it's still, it still just needs a reset every couple days. Making the bed in an RV is always a bit of a workout. You have to do some climbing, but I have to say it's easier making the scamp bed than making the bed in the tiny house because I have more room to maneuver. Okay, mattress protector on. I haven't started sweating yet, so that's a good thing. Now the flat sheet. And there's the flat sheet tucked in really tight into the corners. That's the key. You have to like really shove all the extra material into the corners so that it holds it tight. That also helps to hold our mattress protector in place and our uh, pillow tops. Even though it was super hot on this trip, we were trying to sleep with this blanket because it gave a little bit of protection from those new seams. I would try to hide under the blanket as much as I could because it made it harder for them to get at your skin and bite you. But of course it was a trade-off of trying not to overheat while you were sleeping. But thanks to all the rain, it was a better temperature at night for us to get some sleep. And there's the blue blanket which I think is a queen. The fitted sheet, I believe, is maybe a full, and this blue blanket is a queen, so there's a lot of extra fabric, which I just shove as much as I can into the corners to hold it tight. I'm gonna throw the pillows on there, and then it's all set. Okay, so much better. <laughs> Organized, clean, and in the winter when we have an extra blanket, I'll just fold it and put it across the front here. I put our Little organizers back onto the sides, our pillows, the wedges, and then there's Pat's organizer. And this is about the time when we're camping with Redford that he jumps on the bed and starts rearranging pillows and blankets. But <laughs> since Red's not with us, it'll actually stay nice and organized until we get back. All right, I think the plan now is to go explore some of the walking trails that show just the different environments around the island. So we were actually surprised. We knew that you could have dogs here if you're camping. You just have to keep them on a six foot leash like everywhere. They are not allowed on the part of the beach where the lifeguards are, but you can take them on other sections because we did see dogs yesterday. So we're a little bummed that we didn't bring Redford, but I think all in all, it just would have been too hot for him. Especially that first day we got here. It was, it was too hot for us. So he definitely would not have been enjoying that. The other really neat thing that you can do here is actually have a campfire on the beach as long as it's below the high tide line, which is pretty special. I feel like there's not a ton of places where you can have a campfire on the beach. The other thing we noticed is the, oh my god, look at that spider. Oh, he's huge. You have to see this spider. Oh my gosh. I don't know, but he doesn't look friendly. I'm just gonna say that. 
It's neat though that they have the severe weather shelter for the bathrooms because we were trying to figure out why the showers are huge and they have just benches along the sides. And I think that's why. Like if your tent gets ripped open in a thunderstorm like we had last night, what are you gonna do? I mean, you go in your car, but if there's really like serious weather, you would have to go uh, in the showers. So that's what the showers look like. There's no light in ours, which is funny. We have to bring our lamp in there and it's cold water showers, which actually, I, you'll probably never hear me say this again, but it actually felt really good. <laughs> Especially yesterday, it was so hot. But uh, if we were camping here, maybe in the fall, which we were talking about doing, I think we would probably just shower in the scamp, which would be fine. Cause you know, cold showers in the, in the cold weather is not my thing. One of the signs on the bathroom reminded people not to give the horses water, especially around the bathrooms because they can start to become aggressive in guarding that resource. We went down to the Life of the Dunes Trail first, and this is one of the areas that dogs are prohibited, so we were glad we didn't have Redford with us, but we we're going to check out some of the ecology that's so unique to this island. Justice, the next president to be. The news and watch here your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten, you begin to focus again. And no time flies. We have enough to realize. Bigger than the both of us. 